If you watched our specialty coffee roaster video here in Paris, you might not be surprised to see that I also really like uh, craft beer. And craft beer is one of those things that is up and coming in Paris. It hasn't had a whole lot of a foothold here until fairly recently, but it has an increasing one. And so today it's my honor and pleasure to bring to you some of my favorite tap houses here in Paris, some of which specialize in French beers and some of which, as you can see here, don't. But that's okay, because if you're a beer fan and you're coming to Paris, we definitely have you covered. Welcome to Paris My Pockets, I guess top tap houses in Paris. That was a terrible ending. Let's just go drink. One of my favorites in the 11th is the Couve de Fauve. You've seen this before uh, on my uh, Charonne video when I did this quarter a long time ago, a year or two ago, I think. Local brewery, they actually do all the brewing in-house and there's lots of space to sit inside, but also out on the terrace, which is really nice. The beers are good and often changing up a lot. If you're a fan of sours, it's often a really good place to come for that because they're on tap more often than you would think. Dan got a sour. I got a, an IPA, a hazy New England style IPA. It's light, it's nice, it's crisp. Uh, we're also ordering some food. We haven't ordered it yet. I'm starving, but we'll tell you about the food once we get it. Probably some chicken fingers, some fries, and uh, a little bit of ham, which we'll show you here in a minute. Otherwise, it's just a wonderful spot. Their burgers are good. They have a brunch menu earlier on as well. So evening and lunch are both look very different. If you happen to be over near Bastille, this area just as a whole has tons of good food, lots to drink, lots to see. The nightlife out here is really, really great. Young crowd, really gonna like it. I know I like this. Generally, the service is better than what we've experienced tonight. It was pretty rough, we got forgotten, so our food finally came out. We got fries, side of ham, no chicken, unfortunately. The fried chicken was what I was really looking forward to because their chicken fingers are really good, but we got gembas, is, it's not shrimp, right? It's a prawns. jumbo ship, like prawns? Yeah, let's say prawns. That's really nice. And our neighbors got the roast cauliflower, which they let us try, and it's very good, very garlicky. The, and the aioli with the fries is really good. Anyways, food is good, beer is good. We'll give them a pass for tonight because usually the service is good and they're very, very nice. So whatever. We got forgotten. We don't hold grudges. But we're not going to hide that from you. We're not going to lie to you about it. Also, if you go just up the street, you'll be able to find Paris Saint Bière, which is like a little beer cellar that has a wonderful selection of just different beers and so forth. Of course, you can get beers to go from Fauve, but if you want to wander down the street to Paris Saint Bière, you can always pick up a variety, a wider variety of beers and cans and bottles and take it for your next picnic on your way through Paris. BrewDog is a Scottish brewery that was founded in Scotland, you'll be surprised to know, but it's all over the place now. And they actually, they end up doing guest taps right now. They've got guest taps on from Berlin, which is really cool. So they do brew in different parts of the world, ship it around, and they also host taps from all over the world. But their beer is tasty. Their Punk IPA is a standard go-to. My favorite is the Hazy Jane. It's a hazy IPA that's delicious. I'm, currently I'm drinking a double hazy, which is a double IPA, which is extra strong, and holding a doubly sleepy puppy. The beer is good, the location is great. While BrewDog is not, clearly is not a local spot, one of the unique things about it is it's the only BrewDog I've been to, and I've been to a lot of them, that serves pizza. Most of them serve burgers that I've seen. Anyways, the vibe is really nice. The staff are usually very friendly. They've got these huge booths that are fantastic for groups of people. And then they've got trivia nights on Tuesdays. It's not gonna be your usual BrewDog kind of like mingling vibe, that at least the ones that I've been to are a little bit more open to that, but still a really cool location. You should come chill, have a beer. It's the whole point of this video is you should chill and have a beer. If you're looking for more of the local bar experience out of your tap house search, Bon Esprit is definitely one of the local bars here in the uh, top of the third, not far from Arts et Metier. If you're gonna go to the Arts et Metier Museum or if you're just gonna be wandering near Strasbourg Saint Denis or Republique, it's a phenomenal location that has great beer on tap, some wonderful food. You're gonna see the burgers here inside in a second and is generally more French than it is touristy. For most craft beer locations, you're gonna find a pretty solid mixture of like Anglophones and French people, but here it's gonna be largely French. So if you come, you wanna practice your French a little bit, meet some of the locals, really good spot to do it. And David, my buddy who owns the place, I've known him since he opened it, worked in distribution for beer, so he knows his stuff. And they've definitely got some great, tasty beers on tap. Bon Esprit is also like an old school favorite. Like they were a part of the original game that I ran in Paris when I had a scavenger hunt running around the city. The staff are always very friendly. They speak English very well. And honestly, it's just a good time. Bon Esprit, you know, good spirits. It's a good vibe. Place is always hopping. And Trivia nights on Mondays are always rammed. When you eat here, I think they're gonna keep this going for the last year or so. They've been doing a build your own burger and it is always delicious, including a local cheese that's always changing. We need a Contal, which comes from the center of France or central France, similar to Tom, if you're familiar with Tom. If you're not, you should be. Make sure to eat some Tom while you're here. It's gonna make for a good burger on top of a fried chicken burger. Oh man, don't wait. That's really good. 
good. Genuinely really crispy. Nice, we did the cucumber, pickles, the famous spicy mayo, and the cheese of the moment. Nice and simple. It's tempting. You don't want to overdo it when you're building your own burger, which is really easy to do. Don't take too many boxes. Very good. The fried chicken, your fried chicken sandwich, like this is another, another level up. They're also nice enough to cut it in half for us so that um, we could share it. As you know, I'm not. I'm trying not to overdo it and like order a bunch of food I'm not actually going to eat. So hopefully nothing goes to waste. This is a fantastic afternoon snack. I do like it. Winner. The cucumber is is the winner, yeah. And thanks to today's patron producer sending us out here to have a drink, Eric Hazempa. This one's on you, man. Appreciate it. And back to the tap houses. Hang on a second. That's it for my own. <laughs> If you happen to be in the 20th or the 19th, a little bit farther out for the average tourist, one of my favorite bars in the entire city is Nikiri Bar. They started, I think they started at least, with their cave, or their wine and beer cellar that's over on Rue Jean-Pierre Tombeau, not far from Republique. Phenomenal spot if you want to stock up on beer and natural wine, and that's what they do here. If you happen to have some friends who can't agree on whether it's wine or beer, and you want to do both, this is the place to do it. They've got natural wine on tap, five taps and 15 taps, or 14 taps of beer. I think it was 14 taps of beer and six taps of, of wine. Well, you'll, you'll see on the inside. It's really a drinks and like tapas type place, like small plates generally. So yeah, come have a drink, great date spot and uh, highly, highly worth it. My buddy Tanisha is gonna join me. She's holding the camera right now and she's also a wine expert. So we'll ask her a little bit about natural wine and I don't know, what the heck is that? We got the Croque Morbier, which is made of the pounds of meat, which I'm really excited about. Pounds of meat is a bread that I only recently discovered in my life. Square, spongy, delicious, toasted. It came with apples, pickles, cabbage, zatar, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal seasoning. If you've never had it before, we talked about it uh, in the Rambuteau video just briefly. It's a Lebanese seasoning that is delicious. How does it end up in a toasty? By the grace of God, I believe is how it ends up in a toasty. That's very good. Two slices of bread, phenomenal. And we got a labna with roasted asparagus and hopefully some bread to dip into it because this is, I don't want to eat the labna with just my fork. I got a pale ale to start off light. And I believe, what did you get for wine? It's a claret, grenache gris, and viognier blend. This bar is amazing. I love this place. And I'm going with Fauxfin. Fauxfin is one of my favorite local brewers. You can find cans of their beer all over the place. What the heck's up with natural wine? That's the question we have. Natural is when nothing is added to it and nothing is taken away. So during the fermentation process and then the aging process or anything like that, they aren't adding in extra sulfides, they aren't adding in any foreign yeast or sugar, or anything like that. Just what happens naturally. Vicuterie is not the only place that has its cellar. We also have La Binuse. Une Binuse is slang for a brew. Uh, it's a beer, this is a great spot. La Binuse, uh, there used to be two of them, one on Paradis and one here on uh, Marguerite de Rochechouart. But unfortunately, the Paradis one is closed. Fortunately, the one on Rochechouart has doubled in size, which is a really great surprise for today. They're a wonderful tap house, great nat wine. We're gonna go inside, have some drinks, and enjoy it. They're also on Untapped now, so if you're an Untapped fan, you can get your social points while you booze. So these beers range in price from, there's one that's 750, there's one that's 10, and this then the most expensive is 15. Delicious. Well, there's one that's 650, but it is really good. That's really good. And it's from, and the reason that it's so expensive is because it's from Tallahassee, Florida. It's imported. Okay, I will say this. I'm not actually a huge beer drinker. This is delicious. I love this kind of beer. I can't drink any of like the major brands. To me, it's all cat piss. Yep. This is really, there's a lot of character, a little, so much delicious flavor in here. Yeah. Great beer. So we got a roast, a roast ricotta, 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 a roast, we got a roast ricotta in honey, uh, covered in a variety of nuts, it looks like. It looks like there's maybe a little bit of olive oil too. Yeah, and possibly some olive oil. I have no idea, I haven't gotten to try it yet. service is really nice, these guys are lovely, and if you need to bring a friend that only wants to drink nat wine, they've got a whole section of it. You can pick up some male tears on your way out if you'd like to. Otherwise, tons and tons of beer. Nicola, uh, I was first introduced to in Copenhagen, and they are all over the place. They've got breweries all over the place as well, so you can often get a nice local brew, depending on where you're at. I believe the San Diego one makes some good brews. They've had them here, and they host them in other locations as well as well as some other guests. Got some food in here, and on the Paris one, you also have an upstairs, which gives you a nice little view over the intersection below. And then Nathan killed the footage. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even had a beer yet. We should go get a beer. 
One of the nice things to remember, I don't know if I've said this in another spot yet or not, but all of these tap houses will give you samples if you want to try something. You don't have to buy everything on the menu to see what's going on. Another generalized brewery tip, most of these modern breweries do have alcohol-free and often gluten-free beer. So just because you can't have alcohol or gluten doesn't mean that you're excluded from the experience. Also, this beer is killing it right now. It's really good. Pints are gonna run you anywhere from six to 10 euros here, it looks like. And we've got a ton of stuff in cans, so you can take it home with you if you really wanna bring one all the way back. And the burrata, because this guy has not eaten enough. Dude, there's a lot of green in this burrata, and is that balsamic? Whatever it is, it's making him happy. Mikeler was a hit, despite the fact that it's, it is dead in here, but that's a Tuesday night thing. Don't judge them for that, they're banging other times. That's another thing actually to, to say really quickly is that Mikeler and Brewdog are two breweries that are kind of everywhere now in Europe. So if you're in any city that's not Paris and you're not sure where to go get a good beer, these are two really good options. And they'll often have a lot of really good international stuff on tap for you to try as well. So keep that in your pocket. Keep that in your pocket. I cannot start saying stuff like that. It is a Tuesday evening. Look at this. We got the whole place to ourselves. Party Central. Ooh, there's some dance moves there. Speaking of local corners, uh, places that I like, the Hoppy Corner is a really good one. Also, it's mostly French beer, if not all French beer on tap. And I believe they've got something in the range of 18 taps. Although we'll correct ourselves once we finally go inside and have a drink. They always have a wide selection. The staff is really nice. I wouldn't come here for food. I would definitely eat somewhere else and then come here and drink. I hope they never see this or don't hate me for saying that. But the beer selection is really good. The vibe is awesome. And as you can tell, it is bouncing. Great spot to go. Cooper's also very well known and loved here. At least he was in the past. We'll see if his reputation holds up. So let's go inside. I got the lightest of ales on the menu because we've all had a rough week and the weekend just started. I'm not the only one drinking. There's a red wine on the table, but uh, just so you know, I've been here a lot. It's really nice. It's really fun. This area is just phenomenal. One of the go-to places that you're gonna absolutely have to do when it's warm outside especially, but it's open all the time because they have a delightful interior, it's gonna be Pan Am Brewing Company. They brew everything here in-house on the canal in Paris. And as you can see behind me, there's a phenomenal space to sit on the dock and enjoy the summer weather with a cold brew and some delicious food. I would definitely recommend this. And of course, if you do life on the canal, you can play Patank behind me. Not behind me, but you know, where it happens behind me. Have a drink, chill here. But the Newark is also really cool, but we'll leave that for another time. And there you have it. Some of my favorite tap houses in the city, and there are so many more to see and drink at that we're probably gonna have to do this at least one more time. I'm if in. Not go out to multiple breweries around the city as well. This has been Paris in My Pocket's guide to the best tap houses in Paris, probably part one. Make sure to grab the guide at parisinmypocket.com, and thanks again to my patrons for making this possible in the first place, and we'll see you again for yet more deliciousness around Paris.